The Catholic blogosphere has been talking a lot about the HHS mandate and how it's affected several Catholic organizations, most notably the Little Sisters of the Poor and the University of Notre Dame. I'm going to chime in on this a little bit. Now, just to paint with a broad stroke real quick for those who are unfamiliar with the HHS mandate, it's a mandate that's requiring employers in the United States to provide coverages for abortions and contraceptives. And the University of Notre Dame, along with other Catholic organizations, have all filed lawsuits seeking injunctions from this and protection, saying it impinges upon their religious liberty. The University of Notre Dame was the only Catholic organization this week denied an injunction. And in being denied this injunction, the university was faced with a choice. It would either have to pay fines of $100 a person per day, so exorbitant fines, or comply with the mandate. The University of Notre Dame decided to comply with the mandate, and this has created a huge stir in the Catholic blogosphere. Many people, as it is already, consider the University of Notre Dame to be a non-Catholic institution or Catholic in name only, um, due to many of the things that have happened regarding the University of Notre Dame in the past. And I certainly understand that position, although I would disagree with it uh, strongly. At the same time, I think there's an important thing that needs to be brought out here. And this is, what is the purpose of any Catholic organization? The purpose of a Catholic organization, of course, should be to promote and proclaim the gospel. And there are many ways in which that can be done. We do it certainly through education, as we see in our schools and our universities. We do it by the way in which we take care of the poor, as we see many Catholic organizations that are devoted to assisting and helping the poor. We do it through hospitals, through health care. There are many ways in which the gospel can be proclaimed. But at the heart of every Catholic organization it has to be proclaiming the gospel, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, they have to be able to do it with a clean conscience. And this is why this is so problematic when a university that's a Catholic organization is told that they're not able to have an injunction from the HHS mandate that they have to provide certain services that are contrary to the teachings of Christ, contrary to the teachings of the Catholic Church. It's basically asking the organization to deny itself, so to speak. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, this really should only apply to churches themselves, organizations that are devoted to worship. Something that's an educational institution, such as the University of Notre Dame, serves so many people who aren't Catholic. And that's true, certainly. But at the same time, the heart of the University of Notre Dame, its reason for existence, is to promote the gospel of Christ and to uphold and teach and promote the teachings of the Catholic faith. It can hardly do that if it's being told it has to do something that contradicts the faith. You can't be a witness to the Catholic faith while at the same time doing something contrary to the Catholic faith. In fact, I mean, this is why something like the priest sex abuse scandal was so damaging to the church. We had people who were proclaiming the good news, or should have been, and probably were in their preaching and things, but their lifestyle was being lived in such a way that was completely contradictory to the gospel. And that undermined the entire credibility of the Catholic priesthood in many ways. And... The problem, of course, is that if we're not taking our own teaching seriously, we can't expect others to do it as well. And I know people think that the University of Notre Dame, because it teaches so many other things too, such as science and engineering and education and all these other types of disciplines and fields, somehow uh, should not be part of this exemption. But the problem is, is that the motivation for teaching these things, for educating people, comes from a deeply rooted conviction that we have a responsibility to educate people in general, not just about Catholic truths, but about all things that we know. This is one of the uh, corporal works of mercy, as the Catholic Church teaches, is to instruct the ignorant. And so it does become important important um, for the Catholic Church to be able to offer education to people, not just about religious matters, but about any type of matter in which Catholics have knowledge, uh, have knowledge that they can share with others and contribute to various fields of study. The other thing, though, is that the Catholic faith isn't something that's just about worship. 
It's about a way of life. And so one of the things the University of Notre Dame has as its responsibility is to show that being an educator, studying science, studying languages, studying history, all of this can be done from a perspective that's completely coherent with the Catholic Church. And that's part of the mission of the University of Notre Dame. So it's why it's so scandalous when the University of Notre Dame does something like saying, well, I guess we have to comply with this mandate because we have no other choice. I don't think that's a great strategy for the University of Notre Dame. And again, I'm not part of the administration. I don't know what the whole thought process was. Um, but I do think it's problematic. I take the approach that Father Jay Steele, a Holy Cross priest, recently blogged about this on his Facebook page takes, which is basically that of saying, are we undermining what we're trying to do here because we're protecting our own interests, we're protecting our own money, so to speak, rather than standing up for what we know to be right. And Father Jay Steele then said, you know, the Little Sisters of the Poor seem to have it right. The Little Sisters of the Poor, for those who are unfamiliar with that case, happened to have been granted an injunction, but they were told in order to have this injunction, they needed to sign a waiver which would allow the federal government to provide these services for their employees. And the Little Sisters of the Poor are saying, no, no, you're missing the whole point here. Nobody should be providing these services. These services we believe to be immoral, and we don't want any part. We don't want to give the federal government permission to um, give people these services or anybody else because we believe them to be immoral. Now, this means, of course, that they are faced with the same types of fines that the University of Notre Dame is. And all this is tied up in the courts, of course. But I think there's something to be said for the Little Sisters of the Poor who seem to be sticking to their guns, so to speak, saying, this is what we believe. These are deeply held convictions, and we're not willing to compromise on these than there is for somebody like the University of Notre Dame who seems to be saying, well, this is what we believe, but we're being forced to compromise, and so we will. I think that latter position is a very dangerous position to take from a moral and spiritual point of view. And so I'd really urge the University of Notre Dame to really think about what is it that you stand for, and will this decision on your part ultimately undermine your ability to carry out your mission, which is, of course, to proclaim the gospel through your ministry of education? I think it will. If you're not able to stick to what you believe, if you're able to compromise your values, the question is, how well are you going to be able to preach the gospel of Christ?